Good evening, members of the House of Community on Corporations. My name is Alexander Kippis. I'm a resident of Woodsocket. Um, I was born and raised there. I got my master's degree from Brown University, and I'm an electrical engineer at a small R&D company in Cranston. Um, it's from my perspective as a consumer, an engineer, and a supporter of small business in the arts uh, that I come before you tonight to adamantly and enthusiastically support the net neutrality legislation before you. Um, for this issue, I want to cite my professional background as a programmer and electrical engineer. I won't get too much into it, but the basic idea is that the internet is a commons. Um, it's a collection of information owned and accessed by a huge majority of people, businesses, organizations, and governments um, in our country and around the world. Uh, it exists in personal computers and servers, which are connected by a massive network of telecom lines, enabling us to share information and services like never before in human history. ISPs are only a small piece of that network. They have been allowed to maintain, service, and make money off of telecom lines uh, that connect personal computers to the rest of the internet. They do, not, they do an important service, and they make good money as a result. Um, but they are not the internet. It doesn't belong to them, and they do not create most of the content that we view. Uh, that, that we view or upload or download. Um, and it shouldn't be up to their discretion whether we as individuals, businesses, organizations, and governments deserve faster or slower speeds or even deserve access at all uh, based on the types of information we try to upload and download. The internet is effectively a utility, a pool of information that we all own, contribute to, and draw from. And for the purposes of protecting this communication channel, a bedrock of 21st century Western society, individuals, uh, individual and business access to it needs to be free and open, not discriminated against. This was a fundamental reason for the FCC's net neutrality regulations until they were hastily abandoned in December. If we don't replace them on a state level, it opens up individual internet users to discrimination based on their political leanings, their demographics, and so many other content preferences. Like if an ISP decided they could slow down or completely block access to a website of a Democratic or Republican candidate, um, or an article on MSNBC's or Fox News' website, or even completely shut down a streaming service like, like Netflix if it were in conflict with one of their holdings, say, Verizon On Demand. Um, and from the perspective of small businesses, if an ISP felt so inclined, they might make a business's connection to the internet used for credit card services, their website and sales, uh, their online cloud storage, and their, their IT, their administrative services, and things like that, hundreds of times slower, or even block it altogether, unless they paid a huge fine in addition to their internet service uh, fee. From my unique perspectives, I'm very worried about the effects of net neutrality. As an engineer, I know that this means will stifle innovation uh, and research. An internet whose content is actually regulated um, and whose speeds are discriminatorily throttled by ISPs is a non-starter for technological innovation. Just ask any of the companies in Silicon Valley that have come out in strong support of net neutrality. Um, as a consumer, I already pay for access to the internet, and obviously I don't believe that my individual use should be monitored and used to nickel and dime me. Uh, based on, or influence my opinions based on what I choose to do. Um, just as the, whatever I use the water or electricity that comes into my house for, shouldn't be, like, the price shouldn't be changed based on what I'm using it for. Um, and as an amateur artist and a supporter of small businesses and artists, I'm afraid of what the FCC's move will do to their access to otherwise free and open channel communication. Um, for many, the internet's a way to get their name out there, uh, to sell their products uh, where the cost of a brick and mortar store is unsupportable. With net neutrality, they have a reasonable shot at making it. Without net neutrality, probably not. Uh, none of this is acceptable. I think you can all agree with that. Uh, and that's why the net neutrality protections that have existed in the FCC were in existence for all these years. But now, because they were hastily voted down by a board of five unelected people um, in stark, embarrassing opposition to the majority of citizens in this country and elected officials in our government, um, it seems like it's up to individual states in order to protect their citizens' businesses and interests as democratic governments. I'm so proud of you all for considering this legislation, and personally proud of my city of Woonsocket because just yesterday we passed a resolution supporting this legislation. Um, I have a copy of it. Uh, Melissa was actually going to be here to read it. Um, so, you know, I, if anybody wants it, I think it was $40 here. Um, we'll get it for a while. Okay. Um, so, you know, I implore you to suggest the passage of this to General Assembly. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Um,